Let no. me spot check that. No. Yeah, it wasn't. But, regardless... Jesus. That thing's ridiculous. No wonder it was like $18. <laughs> Hashtag Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. Talk to Sean from Mr. Rogers Homes last night. He was saying, hey, anything you need for your stuff you got coming up, let me know. I'll help out however I can. I uh, might even be in town. We need, so, we need an RV. Great. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, so, Mario, you had mentioned that you wanted to talk about the Bills' approach in the draft mm -hmm. that none of us really saw coming. Right? But, but the approach in the draft that the Buffalo Bills did take. However, mm -hmm. looking back at their picks, it is. Duh. You I know, know what I mean? Like, to me, and maybe to you, and maybe to the nation, it's like, uh, duh. But for for those that are like, okay, back-to-back -back DEs, two tackles and a guard, two, three tackles or two tackles? Two tackles, again, back-to-back. -back. They did go back-to-back. -back okay, but so a few things. One, Bean said he took the, um, the fact that they're going to have the same rules for the practice squad this year uh -huh. into effect in yep. this draft. Absolutely true. Makes sense. Makes 110 percent sense. But... Taking two defensive ends, we've talked about them getting younger at the position. Right. They have to get younger at the position. Right. And then you take two tackles. Uh -huh. You lose Trey Adams, obviously, so right. you had to replace him. Right. And then, you know, it's Neon Dawkins is coming up on, on the later years of his contract. You don't know. Uh -huh. you, you know, you, I'll sound like Paul. You can get out of Williams' deal after next year. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, and the, and the fact of the matter is, yes, you've got both tackles on contract extensions, but you don't win a lot of championships paying your tackles and your quarterback no. in this league anymore. I think the Chiefs have proven that there comes a point where you can't afford to pay the tackles anymore because you got to pay the quarterback. And we all know that at some point, you have to, the piper is, you got to pay the piper at some point. Mm -hmm. And you're living the life of having a, an inexpensive rookie uh, and even next year, even with Allen at twenty-three million, that's still inexpensive for quarterbacks around the NFL. So you got a window for these two tackles to develop them. You take a swing yeah. at the at you know the best tackles you can get your hands on. And guess what? If they do it again next year, I wouldn't be surprised. You just keep putting coins in, keep putting coins in the game, and s see what happens. Because tackles are too. You, you don't have the luxury of being able to go out on the free agent market and dumpster dive for tackles anymore. Like, you just don't have the luxury. No, that's to very it. tough. I mean, the, 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 the ability that the Buffalo Bills were able to do, you sign a Mitch Morris, mm -hmm. you get Feliciano, yep. you get Quentin Spain, mm -hmm. you get Williams. Right. Niseki was in, in, in the mix for a little while. But you got all these guys off the free agent wire. And for majority of the time in Buffalo, it's worked. Mm -hmm. And they've been able to do it. But you see teams always recycling those positions. Those are two positions you always recycle. Mm -hmm. you are, it doesn't matter how many draft picks you have. You could have two. You could have to eleven. You got to get some offensive and defensive linemen mm -hmm. in that rotation, um, even for the practice squad. Uh -huh. I mean, right? Yeah, and that's actually what Stephen Collins had just mentioned. He goes talk about practice squad players, and maybe that'll be something we talk about, you know, later this week. But you, with the expanded practice squad rules, take advantage, get some skill guys, and that's exactly what Buffalo did at the end of the draft, where there were so many of them. Yeah, and they just like well. These last picks, let's throw it. We'll throw it at a corner. Why not? We'll throw it at a wide receiver. Why not? We'll, well throw it at a safety. Why not? Well, you can throw it at a corner because Dane Jackson's coming off the practice squad. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I I think the Bills approach nobody an, nobody anticipated it coming because teams don't normally approach the draft this way. But Buffalo really does approach the draft with, you know with their eye towards, we're going to stay true to who we think the best player is. Yep. That's 
you know, that's the way it was. And, and when word came out that they had a deal on the table for Basham, for the Basham pick, but then they declined it because Basham was still on the board, just tells you that they really were, okay, this is the cliff. This is our, this is our level of acceptable. If it doesn't meet our level of acceptable, then let's try again later. That's it. Let's try again later. And that's fine. And if, if Bean's able to cycle, if he's able to get VPA and get younger in a position, he's going to do it. Absolutely. He's going to – that's his – we have a pattern now. Right. This is yeah. how it's going to work with well, Bean. and let's not, let's not excuse the pattern, right? So no. we saw Dawkins drafted in the second round. We've seen Cody Ford drafted in the second round. Now we see – you know, you're taking, you, yeah, you went one, two in defensive ends, but then you go three, three, five, because they didn't have a fourth round pick. Mm-hmm. They went three, five at offensive tackle. You know, like there's a pattern here. And this is kind of like what you do after you draft your quarterback when you're drafting a Madden franchise, right? It's like you, you go fill out, your roster. Yeah. yeah, you fill your roster, but oftentimes you just, you're like, okay, let me stack this position. Like, which, what's the deepest position? Let me make sure I've got stalwarts there. Because if I'm building the franchise, I want the youngest, best players at the premium-based positions. Mm -hmm. And that's what Bean will always do. Bean will not draft a guard in the first round. Mm -hmm. He's going to stick to premium positions. I think there's a value there where you look at defensive ends, you look at quarterbacks, you look at linebackers. Uh, Those are premium positions that you can't afford to go and pay on the free agent market anymore if you're going to pay your quarterback. So those premium positions... Other teams value them, and if you've got an opportunity where you're sitting on the draft and you don't really have a need at a premium position, well, you're going to get premium value for that pick. Yes. You know, you got to I'm, – I'm surprised the Bills walked away with as many picks as they did. I really anticipated mm-hmm. them to move because I thought that was the pattern we had seen from Bean. Well, Move we did. to get what you want. You did, but as everything happens – those picks that he had early on, mm-hmm. he was able to, you know, uh, move around, get get certain guys that he wanted in for his system. Now, mm-hmm. once you get the guys in for the system, eventually you got to pay those guys if they pan out. Right. So, what he was doing was, he wanted to keep all of his picks because he knows uh, over that cliff mm-hmm. is Edmonds and Allen's contracts where you're going to be like, listen, we have to stock, like you said, we have to stock up at these premium positions because. We're not going to be able to go on the free agent market and get these guys next year because we're paying Allen and Edmonds $35 million just out of, for next year. Out of the, just for next year. <laughs> so that that progression that went through, you know, he, he was like, okay, we need to get younger at these positions. We need to fill these positions. But he also sees over the horizon, listen, if I have these tackles in camp now and I'm able to develop them in our system, not to – I'm not talking about the on the field, like how, how talented these kids are. I'm talking about just from a financial standpoint, he's sitting there going, okay, this is what we have. This is what we're going to need in the future. Let's develop them in our own system, yep. and we'll bring them up this way. As far as the on field goes, such well-rounded athletes that, as we say, can play in any system. What might happen after this year? I mean, gotta we, be we, ready. we beat the drum. You gotta they be will, ready. might have a head coaching job next year. You're going to have – does OG Bobby Johnson go with him? Does he stay with McDermott? What right. happens? Right. So, Well, and I think we need to rename um, – I think we need to rename talking about Brandon Bean and BPA, best player available. I Why? think – I think – Who's the jury? Well, I think you need to retitle that because they don't go with best player available, right? They go BPAA. I'm going to retitle this, and that's how I'm going to refer to this in the future. They go with the best physical athlete available early on, right? BPAA, best oh, physical yeah. athlete available. And that's really the truth. If you look at Russo, right? Kid's a freak, but he's young. You're going to get a fifth-year option on a young player. That helps you, right? You look at Spencer Brown. Spencer Brown had one of the highest RAS scores we've ever seen from an offensive lineman. He had almost a perfect RAS score, right? And I love, I do, we are going to be victim to it. And I know a lot of other local podcasters and people who cover the Bills are going to be victim to it as well because I've already seen it. Um, It is the revisionist history on how great the picks are when literally nobody talked about Basham. Like, nobody talked about Spencer Brown. But because Bean drafted him, clearly it's a great pick, right? Like, 
don't get me wrong, I think that system matters. And I think picking a player that can go into a system matters. But I think character is just as important as finding a player that fits your system. I think you can find a player you feel is malleable, and then you find the character that will be uh, acceptable to that change. Those, the combination of those is what makes them successful in Buffalo. So I really think it's a marriage of, are you a freak athlete? Will you, do you accept challenges? And are you truly skill or scheme specific? If the answer to that is, yes, you're a physical athlete, yes, your character, yes, you have a high character, and no, your, your physical traits do not cause you to be scheme specific, then you're on the board for the Buffalo Bills. Hmm. It's a weird marriage because it's not just about what you see on tape, and that's what a lot of people land on. No. They fall in love with players on tape. We don't know at all what they're like in an interview room. We don't know much about their character because every coach will talk about how great they are because no coach wants it to look for their program like, oh, yeah, this kid, I mean, I think he, you know, is going to murder somebody in four years, but, you know, <laughs> great kid, you know, like you don't want that for your program. Mm -hmm. So why would you ever say anything negative about a kid leaving college? You never would. Every no. coach is always going to talk about a great kid. Yeah. Because it helps them as well. Right. I mean, it helps always, their program. They got their hand in the pot. Exactly. Um, I mean, there was a saying that says that the, the race is not always won by the swift or the battle to the strong. But that's the way to bet. Yeah. So that's the way that Bean kind of takes the approach with, with these guys that are, listen, I don't want to teach you how to be a physical specimen. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't do, okay. If you have the raw materials, and this feels like a flashback to the, to the Kia, because we've said Going this back in the, away. we've said this to the, in the Kia, they feel they have the ability and the confidence in their staff to coach guys up. And what do we see? Thirteen and three AFC Championship game. It may work. Yep. This may this may be the process that everyone's talking about. Get high character guys that are freak athletes. If they're not necessarily a scheme fit, maybe they're a multiple scheme fit. Okay. You may not fit right now in what we want to do defensively, but we're going to find a role for you because you're an animal. And I think that's important to call out because a lot of times we get stuck in, well, the Bills run a, run really a nickel package, so you know. nickel linebacker. That's what I wanted walking out of the draft. What did the Bills not leave with? A nickel linebacker. Nazrael team. <laughs> right, yeah, Nazrael team. <laughs> but the fact still remains, like, I think we all get stuck in what we think the team needs, but the fact is that you need to look at the that these are four-year commitments. You've got an opportunity to get a four-year commitment. Getting a four-year player on the free agent market nowadays, you're paying a lot of money to get a guy on a four-year deal. Mm -hmm. So this is your opportunity to find guys that are going to fit multiple schemes for you and that you think are going to be able to shift with your roster. You don't want to draft a guy, play nickel linebacker, and then Frazier leaves and McDermott goes, okay, well, you know, maybe it's time we change things up a little bit. You know, yeah. you want to find players that you can add, that you can ask to do anything. And, again, I think sometimes we get caught up in need. That's why people were talking about running back forever. I got caught on, on nickel linebacker. Like, I was deep on nickel linebacker. I was, that's all I wanted. That's all I cared about. And I, I fooled myself because I know better than that. Like, yeah. I know better. And yeah. you know better. I mean, we knew they had to go edge. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> they sign Obata. Everyone's sitting there going, well, they took care of the defensive end. What are they going to do in the draft? No, they didn't. No. I think I, I, we, I don't think we expected defensive ends to fall like they did in the draft because normally there's a defensive end taken in the top 10 every year without fail. I went back to, like, on the draft, I went back to, like, 90-plus, and I couldn't find a draft where, in, even into the 90s, where a, a defensive player was not taken in the top 10. There was no defensive player taken in the top 10 of this draft. Wow. So you don't expect that position to tumble, but Buffalo took advantage of it. There were players that I like better than than Bat. I like Basham, right? I think he's a, a good scheme fit for the way that McDermott normally likes his defensive ends. Does fit the mold. There are players that I like better than him, but I have no problem with with you know I have no problem with Basham. I like Sample better, but when you drafted Rousseau, you're not going to draft another player who's similar to Rousseau. No, you know, no. like they're they're not going to do that. They're gonna they're gonna change the archetype, and they're gonna get a different skill set because that's the smart thing to do. You need this position. Let's throw a few darts at the wall, but let's take a sampling of player skill, 
and we'll just see what, what works out. Drafting drafting the back-to-back -back defensive ends now allows you freedom to rid yourself of a few deals that you could pay for Tremaine Edmonds. Sure can. Yep. And put yep. a down payment on Allen. Yeah. Wrap. <laughs> yeah. So that's what you that's what you did. You not only cycled positions, got younger at certain positions, like, like, you're, like you're trying to talk about, but what you were able to do was that in, in doing that and staggering, you know, we talked about staggering contracts. When, when Hyde and Poyer first came in, they staggered them. When they extended them, they staggered them. So when they were able to do all of those things, they're saying, listen, we have to try to cover ourselves in the event. You know, and none of these are being made because of injury. Right. I mean, Bean loves insurance policies. But they're financial insurance policies. Right. He's, he's making, he's, he's, he's gaining equity for future years. Sure like is. you said, four-year deals. You have these tackles, if you want, for four years. Yeah. Now, the question that will arise, and I hate to end this on a cliffhanger, the question that will arise is, do you sacrifice those deals like a Dane Jackson? Because you had Dane Jackson for four years. You cut him. Now he's not. He's not on that four-year deal. No, nope. but he's on one-year deals from here on out. Yeah, but he's on one. But it's kind of like a three-year deal, right? Because yeah. you're on a the exclusive, exclusive rights, rights agent, restricted, right. yeah. and all this other stuff. But when you have the four-year deal, you have to worry about that. Sure don't. That being said, this was an intense episode. It was. Well, it was already. We're back in the car. <laughs>